Managing thousands of crowd agents in a realistic and efficient way has always been one of the great challenges in visual effects. Today I will show you how to use density-based spatial clustering, also known as DBS scans, to segment these agents into groups. This method not only makes the process manageable, but also significantly enhances the realism of crowd simulations. Density-based spatial clustering is a clever method that groups together points that are closely packed while marking as outliers those that lie along alone in low-density regions. For visual effects, this means we can automatically group crowd agents that are physically close to each other, enabling us to apply distinct behaviors to each cluster effectively. Um, let's set this up in Houdini. In this Houdini file, I'm having a crowd simulation that is performing the following moment. You can see that there is three different rings initially and using the cluster algorithms I'm able to cluster the, the points based on proximity and later on I'm applying logics in the dynamic process of, of DOPS to make the agent move at different times based on which cluster they belong to. If I go inside the part of the code is doing the, the clustering split it's in database scan you will see that um, before that I'm just having a normal crowd simulation that has been created using crowdsource nodes so we have the scatter of points that we want to have our engines to be instantiated in and then we use crowdsource to instantiate them and then I'm merging these extra agents in the, in the site and in here, what I'm doing is I'm using the cluster DB scan. This is a method of scaling that it's able to use the well to it develops for us the density-based spatial clustering, and I'm creating a, a MP array containing the positions of each of the agents. This is going to be the training data, and I'm sending it to the DB scan method. You can see that there is two parameters in the DB scan. One of them is the epsilon and the other one is the minimum points. The epsilon is a parameter that defines the radius of the neighborhood around the, a data point. Points with this radius are considered to be in the neighborhood of the initial point, while the minimum sample or minimum points uh, defines the minimum number of points required to perform to form a dense region. A uh, point is considered a core point if it has at least uh, minimum points within its epsilon neighborhood. And the resulting of this, we can get the labels that which cluster each point belongs in. So we, we can have three different kind of points in with this algorithm. There is core points, minimum points within the epsilon neighbor, including the, the point itself. So a border point is not a core point, but falls within the neighborhood of a core point. And then there is the noise points that are neither core nor border points. These points do not belong to any, to any cluster and are considered noise. I'm not gonna go in detail in this video about how dbscan works, but um, just as a general uh, overview, you, you start by specifying arbitrary points in the, in the data set and these points are, are classified as, as core points and a cluster is started in this location. And then the algorithm iteratively collects all directly density reachable points from these core points and in turn all points density reachable from these points and so on. And this process results in the maximal set of density connected points which forms uh, the cluster that we see in, in Houdini. It's uh, repeated uh, for each unvisited point in the data set which can lead to discovering more clusters and identifying uh, noise values. There is several limitations to, to database scan. One of them is the choosing of the, of the right parameter for the epsilon and the minimum samples. You can see here that if I change the, the epsilon, I'm getting very different results than what I initially was getting. The same for the, for the mean samples. So this algorithm can struggle a lot when the dataset contains clusters of varying densities. In this case, it might not be able to capture all the cluster correctly. But for that, there are other cluster methods that could be more suitable for, for those situations. Now we're going to look at how the logics to determine how to move the agents based in the 
in the cluster that they belong to at different times. I have here a very simple simulation for, for crowds. If you're familiar with, with how crowds work in Houdini, you have always a crowd solver, a, a crowd source that contains the initial points that I'm importing. In this case, a sub solver that needs creating me a, a velocity field that is pointing outwards. It's pointing from the origin outside. That, that is making my agents move in, in this direction. Besides this velocity, there's also two states. Uh, states is wh what state each of the agent is, is. There is two stages in the simulation. One is that standing and the other is walking. Side effects has developed uh, something called crowd fuzzy logics. But this is the way that you determine when the transition from state to state has to be performed. I'm not using this, this node at all. I'm not using any of these logics. What, what I'm using is a sub solver where I added a very small condition. I'm just saying that I'm, I'm creating a variable that has the cluster value and I'm multiplying it by, by 40. So if the frame that I'm currently on is bigger than this activation time, I want that the fuzzy logic that I have disabled here becomes enabled, otherwise keep it as disabled. So when it comes enabled, it's gonna transition from standing to walking. And that's why there's agents that start at point one because this belongs to crowd zero. And then at frame 40, there is agents from that belongs to the cluster one that starts moving. And then at frame 80 is when the agents that belong to cluster two start to move. To finalize the video, I would like to talk a bit more about other methods that cluster can be used inside Houdini and, and in 3D. In this case, I'm using it for crowd simulation. In, in large movies, you can use cluster algorithm to manage past number of crowd agents and do more complex behaviors than the ones that I'm doing here. Each cluster can represent different group of characters that exhibit very complete different kind of behaviors. You can also use it for water effects such as tornadoes or uh, hurricanes that use clustering to dynamically group elements in the scene that are affected differently by these uh, weather patterns. You can also use it uh, for space and underwater scenes. Clustering help manage complex particle simulations to create uh, captivating spaces, uh, underwater effects. Uh, all these cluster similar particle type, so, so visual effects artists can more efficiently render scenes with a high level of detail and, and dynamic behaviors. I also see it very useful for architectural destruction. Uh, these algorithms allow for realistic crumbling of buildings in different patterns based on the structural integrity. If you like this content, take a look at my newsletter. I talk about the usage of AI for visual effects every week. Have a good